Thank you very much. God bless you. Change Makers International. The Lord make you a real change maker. It begins with us. We have learned from early childhood. Charity begins at home. Can we add, change begins at home. When I say home, I mean your own inner house, inner home, where you breathe and see and think and plan and go to a place you've never been before. And so, as we begin tonight, we have already heard from real change makers themselves. And everything they have revealed, a first speaker, a second speaker, and the good will message speakers. Everything we get together. And now, what I'm going to do is to just summarize everything and give you principles to lay by. A change will happen to you from tonight. And then you yourself, you will be a change maker. I will be a change maker. Father in heaven, you are our God, our creator. We come to you with the understanding. We come to you with the faith, the confidence that you will make an appropriate change of every one of us. And then you will send us forth to be a change maker in our homes, in our communities, in our country, and then by extension in the world as well. We thank you because we know you have answered and we will see the practical change in every one of our lives. In Jesus' name I pray. God bless you. You can sit down. As we talk about change, change means that we're moving from one level to another. And from one place where we have been, we're moving to another place. Please, you can sit down. Now, I'm reading a verse of scripture from the Proverbs in the Bible. Proverbs gives us the wisdom to lay, the wisdom to move around and to make different impacts in different places at different times and in the nation we belong to. It says in Proverbs chapter 14 verse 34, it says righteousness exalteth a nation. That is when the people are righteous, then we can plan very well and we can do what we need to do. And we can also lift up ourselves, our families, our nation. So righteousness in every sector, righteousness in every department of life, righteousness in what, outward, in everything we do, it says that righteousness exalts a nation. Righteousness in the leadership. Righteousness in the subjects, in the people that have been led. When the normal people, common people, when we exhibit that righteousness, right standing, right action. In every place, in the marketplace, in the office, everywhere. And then righteousness on top with the leaders too. The righteousness combined together will exalt a nation, will move a nation forward, will bring relevant change, important change, desirable change in 
every nation. And then it says in the latter part, sin, corruption, evil is a reproach unto any nation, any country. What I'm going to do tonight is to start with two examples. Two women, one young, the other a little bit elderly. The change they made and the impact they had. I refer to them as a Miriam and then a mother. If you know the story of the nation of Israel, they were a nation of slaves. How did they then turn around to become such a great nation? And how have they remained a great nation until today? You think of their economy. You think of technology. You think about every area of life in a nation. And Israel is an exalted nation. Who were the people, the foundational women that brought about Moses, the child, and raised that child? And that child became a change maker in that nation of Israel and lifted up, lifted them from slavery and led them to the high ground they call the promised land. The Miriam and the mother that became the change makers. The story you will find in Exodus chapter 2. I'll tell you the story. At the time this child Moses was born, there was an edict. There was a law in Egypt where they were, where they were slaves, that every boy that was born will be killed. But every girl, daughter, will be preserved. Well, you understand that strategy. Egypt wanted to make that Israel swallowed up by Egypt so that all the boys are gone. All the men are gone and then they'll get married to the daughters that were preserved. How did God's plan for Israel as a nation became fulfilled that they were not swallowed up is sparing one boy. And that boy, when he was born, they didn't even give any name. Well, say a nameless boy, a nameless young man. And yet, they preserved him only for three months. That's all they could do. And when women's strength failed, God will take over your life. And so, at the end of three months, all they could do was think of a strategy and think of a plan. You know, change makers are thinkers. If you are not thinking, you'll not do anything. You'll fold your hand and you'll say, that's what they said. All the male children will be destroyed, will be totally eradicated. But they took action. Change makers are action people. You, if you just listen to what you have heard today, and you don't go and make a change, and do something that you'll be able to say, this is what I have done in the direction of change. And so the mother thought of what you do. She didn't want to see the child die. Or any of the people, they are mandated to kill those uh, babies. They come and kill the baby. And so she made a kind of little boat and put the child inside. And the child was there by the riverside. But she used her intelligence, you know. Change makers must be intelligent. 
we must know what to do, when to do it, and how to do it. And so she placed that child in a little boat by the seaside, by the seaside. and it was where the daughter of Pharaoh the king will come and take a normal bath. That's how they did it at that time. But Miriam, the sister, stood by. And that Miriam that stood by was watching. Change makers are watchful people. You watch your action, you watch your attitude. Attitude is everything. And she was quiet. Uh, sometimes we talk too fast, too often, too loud. And so we miss our target. But she stayed there until that uh, daughter of Pharaoh came. That's the story there. And when the daughter of Pharaoh came there, she saw the child and picked up that little boat and the child began to cry. Remember, three months old child. And quickly, Miriam came at the right time and asked her, can I go and get somebody for you to take care to nurse the child for you? And she said yes. And Miriam went to the mother and connected the mother with the daughter of Pharaoh and took the child. And eventually, the mother nursed the child. And so, I'm talking to you about Miriam and the mother as change makers. I talk first of all about Miriam. The Miriam was a sister. Who is his sister? As single-minded shield. You know, if you are going to make a change, the first thing about you is you are single-minded. Single-minded. This is the change I want to make. I offer myself. And I'm going to be a change agent. And I'm single-minded. I'm focused on this. If you are not focused in life, you cannot be a change maker. If you don't know the history of the nation, and you know, without my positive practical action, nothing will be done. This Moses, who eventually became the change maker for the whole nation, would have been lost. So, this sister was as single-minded as a shield to protect. Do you have anything to protect in your personal life? Are you single-minded about that? Are you shielding from the enemy? Are you shielding from the people that will destroy and destabilize? Are you shielding this particular uh, commodity? A man, a boy, a girl, or the future change maker. So if you are a sister, a sister like Miriam, the sister is single-minded as a shield. Now, as we look at Miriam, the next letter for a sister is I. Now you see Miriam could have folded her hand. Miriam could just have been praying. Prayer is good, but you must initiate something. It's just like why we are here today. We're initiating something that will bring a change in your life. A change in your family. A change in our nation. And so, Miriam, as a sister, S, I, I is intelligent initiator. Intelligent initiator. As the mother, as the daughter of Pharaoh, grab the baby. And the baby began to cry. Now, that baby needed milk. The mother's milk or a woman's milk. And the daughter of Pharaoh didn't have that kind of milk because she had not given birth to any child. And so, very thoughtful Miriam, as a sister, he had 
intelligent initiation. He initiated the fact. Can I go and call a woman, a mother, that can take care of the child for you? Now, as you become a change maker, you must always think what's in the in need for them. You're not thinking of yourself. You're not talking about yourself. You're not exalting yourself. You're not saying, what's, what's in need for me? There are people that go through life. All they're looking for is, what is in need for me? If you're going to be a change maker, you have to think, what's in need for her? What's in need for them? What's in need for my community? And so she said, can I go and call a woman? that you take care of the child for you, for you. Say for me. When you pour out your life for other people, you become a change maker. When you think of other people, what can I do for them? What can I achieve for them? What can I contribute to their joy? So that Pharaoh's daughter will now say, I have a child. Now, in the, in the sister S, this is strategic supporter. Strategic supporter. And you know how, how little girls will think. At, at that time, Miriam, the sister, was just about 12, 12 years of age. And you, you think about teenagers? They're going somewhere. Come and go with me. Come and go with me. Come and go with me. And that kind of... Uh, Going with other people would have made the change flow. There are times you have to stand alone. There are times you have to stand out. There are times as a change maker, you have to solely, single-handedly, handle what you need to handle. And that was her sister. And he was strategic. See where she was standing and see that she came at the right time. We do things at the right time. And we speak at the right time. And young people like Miriam that would have spoken, she could even have been crying at that time because of her brother, junior brother, just in the boat there. I don't know what will happen. Here comes uh, Pharaoh's, uh, Pharaoh's daughter. I don't know what they will do to my brother. But this was a real model. And that's why we're learning from them that if you're going to be a change maker, it's not just exciting you here and pumping up your emotion and saying, yes, we're going to make a change. There are principles, and these are the principles I'm referring to. T here in the sister is thoughtful timer. Thoughtful timer. Thoughtful. We think before we leave. We think before we take action. We think before we speak. We think before we make our proposals. Are you making a proposal in this area in our country? In this area in the life of our country, I want to make a change. And I'm drawing up a proposal. I'm writing up something because I want to start an NGO in this area. You must be thoughtful. Timer. Now, your time, your plan. Your time, your desires. Your time, the time you bring the proposal. And how you bring the proposal, of course, you must know the history of that community. You must know the, the, the things that are challenges in that community. And you write your proposal in such a way you don't contradict, you don't turn upside down the things that are happening in that, in that city. Now you know, Miriam could have come thoughtlessly and could have said, that's my brother. It's your father, the king, that said they should be killed. Okay, go and kill and eat. That will not save Moses. But because we're very thoughtful, 
what do they want? What does she want? Now she doesn't have any child, and every woman desires a child. And what can I tell her that will make her say yes to my proposal? That's a change maker. This sister was a thoughtful timer, saying the right thing at the right time to the right person and for the right purpose. E, if she was emotionally exemplary, emotionally exemplary. You know, as I know, that um, women are more emotional in, the, in general than men. And at her age, she had to be crying. And when coming, you could have seen the effect of the crying in her eyeballs, on her face. But this was a controlled person. A person under good checks and balances. A person that was just looking for an opportunity. No insult of the nation. No insult of the father of this daughter. And no insult of this daughter. No curse. There you are. You're killing our sons. And that's one of them. You want to kill? Okay, go ahead. God will judge you. Nothing like that. She kept her emotion under control. Can you think of that? These are the changes we want to start with. That you say, I've been guilty of that. I carry my emotion on my nerves. Once I don't like something, everybody in the community will know. And now, in these days of the social media, we take our emotion, we don't like this, we don't like this, and we blow it up. And by the time you blow it up, and you are reporting yourself to the world, I'm emotional about this, and everybody, anybody that sees such a thing like this has to be emotional. Then you caught your way to making the change you ought to make. This sister was emotionally exemplary. And then are a reliable restorer. Mommy, I'm going out. As you have put that boy, my younger brother, by the side of the sea, of the river, I'm going out, I'm trusting God that I will bring this, my brother, younger brother, back to you. I'll restore him to you. That's a change maker. All the people could have been planning how to do this and do this and do that, and the scene does not work. But this sister was a reliable restorer. As you look at people around you, you don't appreciate what they do. You don't appreciate the direction they are going. You don't appreciate the result of their actions. Okay, what do you want to do? You want to restore everything to normalcy. Be reliable and be focused and say, I'm going to be a change maker if I can change the destiny of one baby. Then, he might become a doctor, a lawyer, an engineer, a teacher, a farmer. Might become whatever God has appointed for that child to be. But you will be a change-making sister. One, single-minded shield. Two, intelligent initiator. Three, strategic supporter. And four, Thoughtful time, five, emotionally exemplary, and the last one, reliable restorer. It will happen. Now, if you see that you have not been like this, single-minded, focused, driving to one direction, determined, that's where you need a change. And God will help you tonight, your change will come. Intelligent. You know, sometimes we do things as if we didn't even go to school. 
We do things as if we didn't read any literature book. We do things as if we have not even heard of other people, inventors. We have not heard of the people that, you know, had thought about something new that nobody ever thought about. And we just go, we live today as we lived yesterday. And then tomorrow, we live tomorrow as we're living today. And if you always do the same thing every day, you'll never get to a different destination. It might be a simple thing, like one of our speakers mentioned, and, uh, you know, in the U.S., where the, there was segregation between the whites and the blacks. And uh, they didn't allow... Uh, the blood even sometimes to ride in the same bus. And when they did, if uh, a white person came in, the black will have to stand up. But this uh, time, the lady who eventually brought the um, uh, Martin Luther King Jr. Uh, to uh, see that this is something in to fight for. She was so just tired that she said she wasn't going to stand up. And that became, uh, you know, a problem in court. And the problem led them to their promised land. It's just a matter of saying, no, I won't stand up. I can't stand up. No, that little word might be the word that will speak and you initiate action for change. But if you follow the status quo, it's always been like that and remain like that and everybody will be like that, how will the change happen? Then you have to be strategic. Strategic. A strategy is very important. If we, you know, you don't have any strategy, how do you go from here to there? Suppose a problem occurs, how do you go through that problem and still get to your goal? There must be strategy. And of course, you are thoughtful. You are not thoughtless. You are not just, you know, doing what others do, living how others live, and emotion. You have to control your emotion. And if you can't do it yourself, the Lord will help you. I lost a good amen. amen. There's something in we call emotional intelligence. That's what we call IQ. IQ is intelligence pushing. EQ is emotional. Um, the quality of emotion we have. That's emotional quotient. That as we have the IQ, the aptitude, the brain, the sense by which we can learn, our emotion is actually of more consequence than the intelligence we have. That's why as we look at this, Miriam, the sister, the emotional quotient um, was very important and then reliable. The mother wouldn't have allowed Miriam to go out if she wasn't reliable. You must have done some things in the past that the people will rely on you. That if you say, now, I'm going to do this, you have the history, you have the background that you have always been reliable. And today, will each come to the Lord and all these qualities, it will develop in our lives, in Jesus' name. Now, I said, we're talking about Miriam, and then we talk about the mother. The mother. These, and here, you are either a sister or a mother. And this is what makes change in life. I can talk about many mothers in the Bible that prepared their nation for a change. Now, as I talk about mothers, Emma, I'm looking at the mother, the mother of Moses in particular now, as a, a methodical mentor. A methodical mentor. When you have a child, you understand? God gave me this child to take care of for him, for his purpose, for his goal. 
And as you look at that child, you're always thinking, a gift from God, yes. First, a gift to you, the mother. A gift to the family, understand. A gift from God to the nation. Always look at the child like that. Are you a teacher? Always look at those pupils as gifts from God, and you are to train this child. Bring up this child for the future calling. Are you a doctor? And this child is brought. You are to take care of the child. This child, don't just look at the present situation. You are looking at the future. This child, I'm going to do my best for this child to prepare the child for the future. Are you just a neighbor? And what you say, your impact, your words to your neighbor's children. I'm preparing this for the future of the nation. It makes you to see people in a different perspective. Makes you to see everyone around you, whether a relation or just a neighbor. You see them in another view. The mother then is a methodical mentor. You understand raising up a child in that community where they were slaves, where they never amounted to anything, where no slave ever became an engineer, a doctor, a pathfinder for the whole nation. Here was the mother. And what was she going to do? She was going to be a methodical mentor, not haphazard. You go from one to the other. You tell them the history of Israel and the origin of Israel from Abraham and the promise to Abraham and where we're supposed to be and the prophecy concerning our nation. It was the mother that did that. You understand? There wasn't any church at that time was Sunday school. There wasn't any school at that time where Moses was going, and there wasn't any religious organization that would take up these little children. But the mother did it all methodically. Are you methodical yourself in the things you do? In the way you live, are you methodical? Or are you haphazard? You throw this there, throw this there. And second day, you are looking for that thing. Where did I put that thing? If you are methodical, you will know where you put A, where you put B, where you put the key, where you put all that thing, and where you put your money, and all your accounts. Everything will be so well done. Methodical mentor. And God or raise that up in your life in Jesus' name. Now, uh, the mother, O, oh, is objective optimist. Objective optimist. As a mother, the mother of Moses was kind of an optimist. Didn't think, well, here we are. I'm taking care of you now. And then I'll soon surrender you back to Pharaoh's daughter. What do I know will happen? And when you think, what do I know will happen? You'll not do everything you need to do with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind. Here is our situation. Here is the poverty. Here is the slavery. Even if I taught this child uh, the best I could, uh, what's going to be the outcome? He, she was optimistic. There are people who go through life negative. People who go through life, look at what's happening and look at what so and so is doing. Look at them up there. And they're so pessimistic, they cannot take any practical positive step. And any little thing that happened, what do I expect? What else should I think will happen? It's when you are optimistic, you're positive, and you have objectives objectives i'm doing this or that i'm going here to reach that place i'm spending this amount of money to achieve that is that objective optimism that helps you to go through life 
as a change maker. If you are pessimistic, you give up. Things will never work. Even in this, our land, in this, our country, things will never work. And you know, when you say that, you will have your mind bringing out histories of the past. That one didn't work. This one will not work. That one didn't work. This one will not work. That one didn't get up. This one will not see the light of day. You see, that's the problem for many people. But when you turn around, when you say God is still on the throne, he knows we are here. And he told us if we ask him, he will do it for us. Bring that into your life and suppress, swallow up all those negative utterances. And be objective, objective and purposeful. Mother, methodical mentor. Mother, objective optimist. And T here is transformational teacher. Transformational teacher. There are different kinds of teachers. What do you teach? The things you teach, can they contribute something positive to the life of the one you're teaching? Whatever subject you are teaching, do you make application of what you teach? The mother of Moses was a teacher, a teacher of her own son, Moses. But she was a transformational teacher. We were slaves. I will not be a slave. His heart had been transformed. We're here. We're bound up in this dungeon. And Pharaoh takes us as if we're just kind of inanimate objects. But I will not remain like that. They keep us down under their boots. Yet, I'm going to rise beyond their boots and I'm going to come on top. I seem to be in a valley, but I will not remain in the valley. I'm going to the mountain top where you so teach that you bring up positive thoughts, positive action, positive desire, positive drive. Anyone you are teaching, anyone you are influencing, that is the way of the change maker. Change makers are not people who act bold outside, and then when they go back home, the child does something he shouldn't have done. <laughs> I know you'll never make it. I know you'll never rise up. You'll never go beyond your father. Look, your father is this. I am the one feeding the family. You will be like your father. How does that transform the child? You mind your language. You mind your action. You mind the things you say that will impart the tender, growing heart and emotion of that child. H. The mother is a hopeful helper. Hopeful helper. Now, when your child, if your mother was growing up, and the child attempts to uh, stand up and she fell back, what did you do? Did you browbeat that child, criticize that child? Did you keep the child down? You will never work, you stupid child, stupid boy, stupid girl. No, you are. A hopeful helper. One day, it will work. One day, it will run. And then you helped him up. Not just in walking. Everything in life. In talking. In attitude. In disposition. In development. And even in the school subjects. He has failed. She has failed. What do you do? You beat that child down. Look, you couldn't do this simple thing. If you cannot do this simple thing, I will do greater things in life. There's no point wasting money on you. There's no point wasting all my efforts on you. Uh -uh. A mother should be a hopeful helper. And if you are working in an institution, 
It may not be your biological children. They'll be people who are looking up to you and your words matter to them. Are you a hopeful helper? You know that tomorrow this child will be where you couldn't have been. But shall carry your image, carry your lessons, carry your teaching, carry your formative instruction, and carry that thing to places she couldn't, he couldn't have been without you. The mother, he is an exemplary educator, exemplary educator. She educates not only in theory, but in the practical. My child, be bold. That's okay. Let him see that boldness in you. My child, be truthful. Liars are not reckoned way. Nobody wants to employ a liar in a good institution. Thank you, mother. Show it too. Show it. You want a child to be truthful. Be an example. You want the child never to complain, never to murmur, never to say, what kind of mother is this? I wish I'd been born by another mother. What kind of daddy is this? I wish I'd been born by another daddy. You don't want the child to say that. Then you don't say, what kind of country is this? I wish I'd been born in another country. Because those children, they take after what we do, what our lives exemplify. And so, if we're going to raise up change makers like Moses, we ourselves must be change makers. We educate them, but we are examples of what we're educating them on. God will help you. He'll give you the grace. And there are things we never say. Even if those things are right, even if we know those are facts, there are facts that can destroy the mind, the hearts of your children. You know something bad going on. And you know that, you know, you are at the table eating. And you don't have any other discussion except the discussion on uh, this is bad, this is bad, the leaders are like this, the leaders are like that. Some secret, secret things that you know, that you can say, I can prove them. They are facts, but they are negative facts. And they will only poison the hearts and the minds of your children. And so, as a mother, you will be an exemplary educator. After all, when our teachers come to class when we were in the primary school, they didn't teach us everything they knew. The one that was to teach English just came and taught the English and they didn't talk about, you know, all those other things going up in the air, in the sea, in the forest. No. Our minds couldn't take that as children. And so be an exemplary educator as a mother. Are resilient retrainer. You're training up the child and you train him in little, little things before you build up and teach this and teach that. And the child has not got what you have taught and trained him for. Training cannot be done in only one day, not even one week, not even one year. And so you are resilient yourself. You don't give up on any child. You don't give up even on yourself. I learned that yesterday. It has not yielded fruit. I learned it again. I was trained in this direction. The training has not brought up the fruit. Retrain yourself. I promise myself I'll not do that again. I did it again. That's all right. Do it. And do it right now. When you can make the things that were wrong, and you're not giving up, and you say, I'm going to be a change maker. 
And then you found yourself doing something and your mind asked you, is, thou, is it how change makers act? Okay, I have failed. Now, if you fail, fail forward. Don't fail backwards. If you fail, don't lie down there. No point, no use. I am a failure. No, you are not a failure. You are somebody on the way to success. I said, I am on my way to success. Show me a man, show me a woman who is now like an expert in her field and ask her, did you ever make any mistake? <laughs> said, yes. If I didn't make a mistake, I'll never have made any other thing in life. Life starts with rising and falling. Life right, goes with, you know, trying to walk and stumbling. And life begins in a way that I failed, I fell, fall forward. You will not go back. You learn from your mistakes. You learn from the things you try to do and you could not make it. But tonight we're having a new start. A new beginning. You are going to be a resilient retrainer. You retrain yourself. All these things you have heard today and the principles you have heard, you say, I will now live by this. Write them down. Go over them again and again. And when you see that your human ability is not able to make the change by yourself, our creator God in heaven invites us. We can talk to him. I've been a failure. I couldn't hold that. I couldn't do that. I couldn't maintain that. Help me. It will help you. I said it will help you. Even today, tonight, it will help you. And then you say, this is what is making me to have the setbacks. You remove all the setbacks in your life. Today, we we'll start a new journey. A new journey of change makers. Change makers. Now, did, did, you, did you see this? We're talking about Miriam, the sister, and the mother making the change for Moses. But think about this. Have they made the change for Moses? A change also happened in their life. Now, the royal family knows the mother. Who knew the mother before? Until she came into the life of this child to make a change. Miriam. Now, Miriam was known in the palace of the king now. She could go there because she was the one that connected the Pharaoh's daughter with the mother. And so, as we make changes in other people's lives, God will make tremendous change in your own life too. Whatever has brought tears in your eyes, the Lord will wipe them away. What has brought discouragement and no determination, no goal anymore, the Lord will wipe everything away. He will impact your life to be a change agent. And when you make a change, he makes a change, I make a change in our different fields, in our different endeavors, our country will change. That's all the amen you have. When our country changes, it will be of benefit to me, of benefit to you, of benefit to our children, of benefit to our families. And if there's no road getting to your village, to the place you came from, when the changes take place, good road will get to you. And all the produce of the market that couldn't get there before will get there in Jesus' name. No hospital in our community. If, uh, you know, we have to uh, get to the hospital, we have to go to the capital 
to go and for the good hospital. Hospitals are coming. Good roads are coming. And all the good, good things we need, they are coming. But let us begin one by one, one after the other, to be the change we expect. I am optimistic that that change is starting tonight. Will you allow that? Now, let's turn away now from other people and look inwards. Look at your life. Look at your own way of doing things. Don't you think a change is necessary? A change is necessary. And the Lord will make the change and then you will go out as change agents, change makers, change markers, and change examples everywhere you go. I was waiting for another amen. It's about an eyes closed. Here is the time for us to allow God Almighty to touch our lives, make a change, and start with that change, and make that change positive, practical, permanent. And as he makes that change, we we'll go back to our families. And charity that begins at home, the change will begin at home. And go to our schools, and go to our institutions, and go to our worship places, and go everywhere. And the change God does now in our lives will carry the change back to those places and people will see the change and the change will reflect on them. And we will become a community of change makers in Jesus' name. Amen. A determined amen. A decisive amen. So bow your head and close your eyes. You want God to look at all those areas of your life that need change. And will become like the sister, like the mother. We are pointed out. doesn't come naturally. But God will do it in our life. And over there where you are, you're saying, oh Lord, here I am. Start that change in me. Start that change in me. All those areas you have discovered now, start the change in me. Wherever you are, you just raise up your hand. I'll pray with you. Where are you? Start that change in me. You're raising up your hand. I can't see very, I can't see you very well in the crowd. So just stand up. Start the change in me. And you mean it. You stand up. The same Lord. Start this change in me. A decisive change. A determined change. The desirable change. Almighty God, we thank you for the beginning of positive, practical, permanent change in every one of our lives. We pray, O oh Lord, we will not remain the same as we have been before. Let your power, let your strength, let your goodness come into every life and turn us around in the right direction. Make the change in everyone. Help us, Lord, to go out of that definite change and go to impact our communities. Thank you, Lord, for the answer. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Thank you very much. God bless you. You've been a good um, audience. And the change that has started today will continue in every life. And we will see the change in our communities.